kept threatening to bust out the whiteboard, and I've done it, and now who's laughing? No one. Because this isn't funny. This is really serious business. Serious plotting business. Hi guys! Today is NaNoWriMo Day 17. Yes, I am blonder, if you noticed. Um, and I'm having 7% more fun than I was yesterday. It's a scientific fact! Anyway, I'm just gonna do a quick update for you guys right now and then we will jump to the plot board. What is the plot board, you might ask? This is the plot board! But we're not there yet! Well, hurry up. I'm trying! Anyway, anyway, hi! How are you today? I'm good. Doing good? Well, a little bit of good and bad. Let's start with the good. I got an iPhone today. I got an iPhone. And I got the new one, the 4S. And it's really cool. Let me show you guys something. Hey iPhone, where can I bury a body? Checking your current location. I found my stationary stereo close to you. You're an accomplice now! Yeah, you can go to jail. Anyway, iPhone. What is 28,333 minus 27,209? I found this for you. Result, 1,124. Thank you, iPhone. That, that's how many words I still need today. So it turns out I'm really bad at this whole getting ahead thing. Um, yeah, not so great at it. I haven't even done all the words for it today yet. I'm filming this vlog. I gotta work soon. I'm just barely on track and that's not the plan. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna persevere because I'm a fighter. Y'all know me. Still the same old G. I've never been a G. No. What is a G? So yeah, that's it for my little update today. I hope you guys are getting your words in. I hope you're doing good. Um, is it my turn yet? Yes, it's your turn. Yay! Okay, so, what, what, what? I don't even get to say bye? Fine, hurry up. Say your goodbyes. Bye guys! I hope you enjoy my little run through of the plot board. I hope you have a great night and I will talk to you tomorrow. Goodbye! God, take forever much? Well, now that I'm done, I can start. So this is the plot structure that I am currently using. Sometimes it changes, I tweak it as I go along, but um, this is kind of my working theory right now. I start with the three act structure, and in the first act, we have the introduction, the reaction and action, and the first plot twist. In act two, we have fun and games, the midpoint, and the action and dedication after the midpoint. And for act three, we have the plot twist, the second plot twist, um, the converge where everything comes together, and the finale, which is the finale. Duh. So let's start with the act one, block one, the introduction block. Now I mentioned before that like, okay, there's nine blocks, so if you do 10,000 words for each block, you have a 90,000 word story. If you do 6,000 words for each block, you have like a 54,000 word story. So it all depends how long your book will be, but you want each of the acts to be kind of similar in length. That's what I do anyways. I know some people do like 25% for Act 1, 50% for Act 2, and another 25% for Act 3, but I, um, I like it even. I like it to be balanced, so I do an even third, third, third. So yeah, the first block is the introduction block, and that is the introduction, the inciting incident, and the immediate effect of the inciting incident. The second block is the reaction to the inciting incident. The second block is also the hero taking control of their life again. You know, the inciting incident happens to them, but protagonists take action. So after the inciting incident happens, they get to 
take control and be active again in their stories. So the second block is reaction to the inciting incident, taking action and moving forward, and then a consequence for their action. And this is where you start to show how their life has changed from the inciting incident. And the last block to act one is the plot twist, which is, you know, pressure, pressure rising, the protagonist is getting more stressed out, the stakes are being raised, and the plot twist where something unexpected happens, something that sets the story into a new direction. And the push is what pushes the protagonist into this new direction. So the plot twist creates the new direction and the push pushes them into it. Then we get to act two. And act two is like the most variable because depending on what kind of story you're writing, what your characters are like, if your midpoint is a high point or a low point because that shapes like your whole story arc, you know, beginnings and endings kind of follow the same path, you know? You have to start off in a certain way. You have to start off with an introduction and an inciting incident and a reaction to that. And you have to end with, you know, your converge, everything coming together and the climax and the resolution. But for the middle, you have a lot of room to play around. And for act two, you also have a little bit more room to like mix these around. Like the fun and games part is a block of 6,000 to 10,000 words about of fun and games. And in that block, you have to introduce a new world, do some fun and games, and have an old world contrast, but you don't have to do it in any specific order. Like the introduction block, you have to go intro, inciting incident, effect, because they're all linked. But new world, fun and games, old world contrast, you can mix those up and do them however you please. So yeah, a lot of act two is dependent on your midpoint. You have your build up, uh, your midpoint, and then the reversal, how everything has gotten turned around. After the midpoint, you have reaction, action, the protagonist doing something again, and you also have the dedication. This is something that happens mostly at the end of act two in a lot of stories, which is where the protagonist dedicates themselves to see through the story to the end. And that kind of pushes you into Act 3 and carries you through the end of the story. At the beginning of Act 3, we have plot twist number two. The protagonist has just dedicated themselves to finishing this event, whatever is happening to them, and seeing it through. They have dedicated themselves to something. And the plot twist number two comes to mess all that up. Pressure rises, stakes are raised, the plot twist happens, which usually is a huge setback for the protagonist. Usually it's um, the antagonist getting a great victory. Thumbs up for them, except no, we hate antagonists. Thumbs down. And then you end the seventh block with the darkest moment, which is where the protagonist is just at the lowest point they've ever been. They feel like they have been defeated, there is no hope for them. They are having a very bad time. Immediately after the darkest moment, we have the power within. This is where the character overcomes their darkest moment. They realize, you know, it's that, it's that cheesy Disney moment where they realize that the power is within them and they've had the strength the whole time and they're a hero, yay! The power within makes them take action and them taking action is what pushes the story into its conclusion. Um, everything starts to converge, all the different plots, all the different characters. This is where it's really cool to throw in some like contrasts to the very beginning, like how much has really changed in your story? Throw a couple contrasts, show how different their life is at the converging point. And after the converging point, we move to the finale. The first part of the finale is the collision, the battle. This is where everything is converging. This is where it goes boom and exploderates over everywhere. After the collision and battle, you have the climax, the high point of the story, and the immediate wind down of the climax. What happens directly following, like your immediate falling action. And Lastly, you have your resolution. Um, everything gets wrapped up nicely. The whole story is over. You have a conclusion. You had 
goals, your protagonist has reached their goals, everyone lives happily ever after, or not, depending on what kind of story you're writing. But yeah, that is block number nine. The battle, the climax, and the resolution. And then you get to write the end and dance, because you're so happy that you won NaNoWriMo. Or you won the story if you're writing and it's not NaNoWriMo time. Anyway, I hope this was informative. I hope it made a little bit of sense. Um, I hope you guys understand a little bit better this crazy nine block theory that I'm always rambling about. These are the nine blocks and then these are the three elements of each block that I turned into chapters. So, you know, obviously a lot more happens in this chapter than just reaction, but it's dependent on what's going on in the chapter. It's dependent on your characters. Where does the scene set? Lots of stuff. These are just, you know, the big plot moments that happen in each chapter to make sure that each chapter is important. Yay! Anyway, I hope you guys liked my demonstration. I hope you learned something or not. You don't have to listen to me. I, I sound like I know what I'm talking about, but mostly I don't. Try this out. Try, watch a movie, okay? Watch a movie and see if it follows the structure. A lot of movies do. Um, divide a movie evenly into nine, okay? Divide a movie into nine parts. You know, find a nice 90 minute movie so it's cake. Divide it into nine parts, watch the movie, and see if each 10 minute block follows this. It might. Most movies do, I think. A lot of the ones I've watched do. Sometimes there's a little bit of like leeway, rule bending. You know, this is this is a skeleton. This is not, you know, 100% what you, what you have to follow. This is just a structure that you lay your plot on. Like a coat rack. And your plot is a coat. I don't know. Anyway, that is everything I have for you here at the plot board. Um, maybe I'll maybe I'll use this again. I, I have a couple ideas to um, take movies and books as examples and go through them and see how they line up to this and like give examples. Maybe that will make a little bit more sense. But I'll have to do that kind of thing next week because I'm going to be busy this weekend. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you like my plot theory board thing. Um, yeah, I'm sorry this video wasn't funny, but like I said, plotting is serious business. No one's laughing. No one's laughing. Don't laugh! What's wrong with you? I will see you guys next time, where presumably I will have less conversations with myself. Thumbs up! Bye guys, I hope you have a good night. I'll see you soon.